Welcome again. In our session right now, we are going to be talking about the parable of the ten minas, also called the parable of the three servants or the three stewards. And so what we're reading here is Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to basically set the stage. Now, Jesus is talking to basically the general public here. Um, he is not talking to just his disciples, and it's very important to understand the difference between the two. What Jesus says to his disciples doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. Let's get on with reading verse 11. As they heard these things, he went on and told a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they supposed that God's kingdom would be revealed immediately. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He called ten servants of his and gave them ten mina coins. So it says here in the notes that ten minas was more than three years wages for an agricultural laborer. So he called ten servants of his and gave them ten mina coins and told them, conduct business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent an envoy after him, saying, we, we don't want this man to reign over us. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? Now, Jesus is obviously talking about uh, himself or you know, the kingdom of God, the rule of God. Isn't it, isn't it interesting that a lot of, I should say, isn't it sad that a lot of churches today preach a Jesus that the world would love, you know? A Jesus that just goes around loving everybody, accepting everybody. We know that's not the case. We know that he was rejected and despised and hated by people because he, he called out their sin. He called out their sin. So um, that's why it says in verse 14, his citizens hated him and sent an envoy after him saying, we don't want this man to reign over us. Let's read verse 15. When he had come back again, having received the kingdom, he commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by conducting business. Notice the Lord is interested in being fruitful. What you've gained, gaining. Verse 16. The first came to him saying, Lord, your mina has made 10 more minus. Verse 17. He said to him, Well done, you good servant, because you were found faithful with very little. You shall have authority over 10 cities. I find it very, very intriguing that Jesus taught in many different ways that his followers, his true servants, will be put in authority to judge and to be in authority over a lot of people. So here we got a servant who was given one mina, and he took that mina and gained ten more. He was very wise. He, he knew how to deal with that money. And so his master, the Lord, was very pleased with him and said, Okay, you have just taken one mina and you've made ten more. I'm going to make you ruler over ten cities. Ten cities. Not just one whole city, 10. Let's read on. Verse 18, the second came saying, your mina, Lord, has made five minus. So he made half as much as the other one. You know, the other one made 1,000%. This made 500%. Verse 19, so he said to him, and you are to be over five cities. Another came saying, Lord, behold your mina, which I kept laid away in a, in a handkerchief. For I feared you because you are an exacting man. You take up that which you didn't lay down and reap that which you didn't sow. So in other words, this servant was calling the master an evil man. Not fearing him in a good way. Not fearing him in the way that God wants you to fear him. But fearing him that he would be a bad master, a bad lord. That he would reap where he didn't sow. Uh, take up where he didn't lay down, and he would take up other people's, basically touch things he shouldn't be touching. Verse 22. 
He said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. Once again, notice how Jesus taught, and he taught this in other passages as well, that you will be judged a lot by just what comes out of your mouth. Your lips, your tongue will be will determine your judgment. That's why it's very important to be wise and to watch your tongue. Watch, watch what comes out of your mouth. Verse 22 again, he said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I'm an exacting man, taking up that which I didn't lay down and reaping that which I didn't sow. Then why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? And at my coming, I might have earned interest on it. He said to those who stood by, take the mina away from him and give it to him who has the ten minas. They said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. For I tell you that everyone who has will more be given. But from him who doesn't have, even that which he has will be taken from him. But bring those enemies of mine who didn't want me to reign over them and kill them before me. Yeah, huh. what a thing to say. Not just go secretly kill them in some secret room where nobody can see, but no, bring those enemies to me and kill them right in front of me so I can watch it. This is the Lord. This is God. This is God's word here. This is the Lord's parable. More or less talking about himself and how he's going to judge people on the end, you know the end day it's not going to be pretty it's not going to be pretty jesus is not this meek lowly little weakling you know little you know pansy <laughs> not at all he's a lion and he will be fierce on that day can you imagine? Jesus says, bring every one of those enemies of mine. Now, these enemies, according to Matthew chapter 5, or excuse me, in Matthew chapter 7, and in other portions of Scripture, we've dealt, it, we dealt with this over and over again. Those enemies, for the most part, will be people who think that they're good with him. Oh, Lord, we know you. We've been to church a lot of times. We, we prayed in your name. We've seen miracles in your name. We've done lots of things in your name. We've got a ministry called Jesus Ministries. <laughs> we believe in you. We trust in you. We said this in his prayer. We're good people. Yada, yada, yada. He says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. You who live like there's no law. You who live against God's law. Let's read verse 27 once more. I mean, this, you gotta, we should be able to swallow this as Christians. But bring those enemies of mine who didn't want me to reign over them here and kill them before me. Verse 28. Having said these things, he went up, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. Now I know I said I was only going to read to verse 27, but uh, yeah. What a story. What a story. And a very serious story as well. Make sure you believe in the right Jesus. Everybody's got their own Jesus, seems like, anymore these days. And everybody's Jesus is compatible with them, of course. They mold Jesus into somebody that they like. Somebody that they like. Somebody that is, is cool with them, is down with what they do. It's not the case in the truth, in true reality. Get out of your fantasy, Christian. Get out of your fantasy, man. Let's get into the truth. Let's get into the real, real, historical, biblical Jesus. Let's be humble enough to lay aside our Jesus, our little golden calf Jesuses that we have up on the shelf in our lives, in our hearts. Let's throw that out. Let's destroy it. And let's go for the real, true Jesus of the Bible. I don't know about you. I want the truth. I want the truth here. 
And you know, a lot of times the truth is not easy. The truth is not pleasant. The truth is not comfortable. But I want the truth. Don't you? Make sure you uh, follow the rest of my teachings. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out the other teachings that I have posted. Make sure you check out my blog and the other, um, check out my other uh, social media as well. And be blessed as you call upon God. Whatever you do, seek God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. Seek Him with your whole heart. And it says, if you do, with all your heart, that can mean trashing your reputation, you know. That can mean throwing out everything you got. That can mean losing all your money, even your family, even your friends. Especially your friends. <laughs> your ungodly family family members as well. But you have to pursue this and take hold of it like with like a bulldog. Grab onto it, bulldog tenacity. And don't let go like Jacob did when he was wrestling with that angel. I'm not going to let you go. I am going to wrestle with you all night until you bless me. And as you do that, may God truly bless you. Open the eyes of your understanding and show you great and mighty things, so much so that you can't even speak it. You can't even talk about it. It's possible. Thanks again for listening. And may the Lord bless you continually and mightily. Amen.